So I came across this uh, lady. Her name is Nyla Rose, and I saw her on a podcast earlier today, and she gives her testimony on how she grew up in witchcraft into the occult by her family, and her family actually put her in a school, a public school, an academic school that was occultish witchcraft. I kind of almost see it like that Harry Potter movie. It was like that, and this was in, I believe, in England. And I was listening to her as uh, I, I was listening to her uh, testimony as I was working out this morning. I was like, "Oh wow, this is interesting." So she talks about, of course, her involvement in the occult. Uh, she was possessed. She was doing these rituals. She talks about abortion how abortion is actually a blood sacrifice to Satan, whether you believe it or not, it is, and she will definitely talk about that and a whole lot more. But if you guys are dabbling into this occult witchcraft, and she even talks about yoga, how yoga has spiritual ties to demonic things. So you got to watch out. Even if you're a Christian, you say, oh, I'm a... I'm just doing it just for the health reasons. I'm just doing it to stretch. I'm going to tell you, you're going to stretch yourself pretty thin because the dem demons and the devil don't play, guys. The devil don't play. I know that we are all trying to uh, get uh, search God. We're all trying to be more spiritual. Everybody is. I don't care. Even if you're an atheist, there's something inside that's tugging you towards Christ. And you have to, uh, you have to let the Holy Spirit guide you to Christ. I mean, you have to to surrender. Is, is what I was trying to look for. You have to humble yourself, surrender yourself, guys. The devil might give you a little something, something to bite on, to chew on, to uh, give you that little temporary pleasure here and there, and and maybe even fortune, money, fame, whatever. But then he's going to rob you at the end. He's going to take your life at the end. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life in abundance. Jesus' team is the way to go. That's the winning team. The devil, he's a loser. He's always been a loser. He's been defeated. He will be defeated. And he's going to be defeated in the future, guys. I'm going to shut up. Let's go ahead and listen to Nayla Rose. And we're going to listen to... Uh, her, uh, her her testimony on her own channel. If you guys want to uh, check it out, it's, it is Nayla Rose. The name of this video is New Age to Jesus, Demon Possessed, Witch Saved by Christ. This is a two-hour testimony, two-hour video. I don't know how much of this we're going to listen to, but uh, let's see how much we could uh, watch together. Let's go. Yeah, I realize that this level of warfare against us recording and sharing our testimonies is normal. It's something that a lot of us go through. So I just want to encourage you that if you're going through that right now, just persevere because the reason this happens is that there is real power in sharing our testimonies. And, you know, the Bible says that we overcome Satan by the power of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So there's real power in sharing um, your story and how Jesus has saved you. So if you're in that place right now, I just encourage you to keep going, just push through and let the Lord guide you. Okay, so I want to start from the beginning, um, my childhood. So I was raised in England. Um, I come from a broken home. I was raised by my single mum and she raised me and my sister uh, without my dad. I never knew him. Um, and my mum removed us from him when I was really young. I think I was like one or two years old um, when I might have encountered him, but I don't remember that. So growing up without a father um, is definitely something that um, impacted me a lot um, and my sister too. So their relationship, my mum and dad, it was very toxic, but I don't know the details because um, yeah, they both have entirely separate accounts today of what happened, completely opposing accounts. So I guess I might never really know what happened, but we grew up um, without a father and my mum really tried her best to raise two kids on her own, which is not God's design. And she really did her best, but she was um, herself operating from so much trauma and dysfunction that 
our childhood was really chaotic and um, emotionally turbulent and our home was a very toxic environment spiritually and emotionally and psychologically so it wasn't a place that felt safe and me and my sister both uh, experienced a lot of trauma as a result and I'm sure my mum did as well and it, it really just was an environment that was um, full of demons um, so I was raised without God I never um, I never knew the God of the Bible, I never knew any Christians, never went to church, never even saw a Bible, like I hadn't seen a physical Bible until <laughs> until I got born again. Um, but not only was I raised in, in a godless culture, I was raised in the occult. So my mum is to this day a Reiki master and um, my heart really grieves for her and I pray for her uh, to, to see the light. Um, but I also understand that she's in the false light of the new age and um, yeah, that light is very bright, that false light, and it looks like real light, but once you ex experience real light, um, it becomes clear that it was a false light. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that myself all the years I spent in New Age, and so I understand that she, it, she, she isn't aware of that yet, but I pray for her. Um, so all of this is to say that I was raised in an environment that was filled with witchcraft and um, it was also very emotionally um, abusive, and I found myself um, from a very young age, just experiencing this profound loneliness, this feeling that I was alone in the world. Um, and so I had a lot of imaginary friends and other um, spirits that I started to speak to early on. So it was normal for me to um, attend drum circles and moon rituals and shamanic hippie festivals and just all the things that people kind of get into once they're older. That was a part of my childhood. I mean, a lot of people in New Age kind of enter into that stuff uh, when they start partying and they start exploring their own spiritual journey, but that was very much part of how I grew up. Um, and I was very spiritually sensitive. I was labeled as a, a gifted child or an indigo child, so I, I could see spirits, I could talk to them. I was extremely um, sensitive to sound and frequency, and I, I guess I was always a seer because I would see things in the spirit that I couldn't explain. Um, I had like a supernatural gift for singing from out, straight out of the womb. My mom said I was always able to sing. Like there, there were just lots of things that um, meant that she labeled me an indigo child. And so I was given kind of special treatment, but it, it was um, as if I was peculiar. <laughs> and now I know I am a peculiar person because God has chosen a peculiar people. But because of that, I went to a special school, um, which is called the Waldorf Steiner School. And um, that was founded by Rudolf Steiner, who is an Austrian occultist and um, clairvoyant philosopher. So he uh, instilled all of these pagan and um, occultic ideologies in his curriculum that he designed. And so it's a school that really encourages children to worship the creation rather than the creator, to engage in pagan rituals, to explore the spirit realm. Um, and so, you know, they teach that fairies are real and they really try to encourage us to just indulge in the spirit, but they, um, they do that not understanding that they're essentially teaching us witchcraft. So we would do lots of pagan rituals as part of our school curriculum. And um, because I was this special child or this very sensitive child, I was also allowed to explore a lot of that stuff even more and explore my art. Um, I was really into drawing and painting. And so everything was kind of, my childhood is like this kind of blurry space because I was always in the spirit realm, always talking to, to, to these beings that I could see and hear. And um, yeah, people would describe me as away with the fairies, just not quite not quite here. And that's how my childhood feels. It's a little blurry when I try to recount it. So that's why I wrote down some notes because even just trying to think back to that space is uh, to that period of time in my life, it's very blurry. But I do remember um, everything that I would see and experience in the spirit more clearly than I remember the things that I saw and experienced in the real world. So I remember I used to be able to, um, I could walk through a forest. I don't, I don't know why, well, actually, I do know why. So I could walk through a forest and I could see all of the spirit beings behind every tree. And they were, I could see them talking to each other and communicating with me and I could hear them and, and I could communicate back. Um, so now I understand that's because demons shapeshift. And so I was very enamored with nature. I really found nature to be inspiring um, for my art and I found it to be a therapeutic spiritual space that when I went into nature, I just opened up and I could see all these beings. So. Um, I used to talk to all of these spirits through the creation, through different forms, water, fire, trees and plants, through the wind. I would hear voices on the wind 
and I knew how to kind of summon them or um, get them to come and hang out with me. And so those were my companions, really. I, I wasn't great at, at making or keeping friends, but I would talk to my spirit friends or imaginary friends. So, um, yeah, I went to this very um, unusual pagan school, and there was also a lot of... Um, there was a lot of paedophilic activity in the school that I was in. I don't know if it's like that across all the all the Waldorf Steiner schools, but um, the one I was in definitely had a sort of pandemic of paedophilic stuff that was being exposed from time to time. And um, I remember my mum talking about it and warning us of things. Um, and at age seven, I was molested by someone from my school. And um, that's when the spirit of lust and sexual perversion entered me as a child. Um, from that time onward, I became completely obsessed with masturbation. I couldn't not do it. I, I would do it dozens of times a day and I had to do it wherever I was. Um, it was, it became something that was like this huge burden because I had to do it. Um, and I was ashamed. I knew it was wrong. It felt wrong that I was doing this and I had shame about it, but I couldn't stop. So I began feeling very anxious after that time, once that spirit of lust entered me my anxiety just skyrocketed and I started to become more and more depressed and um, socially awkward. And then at age 11, I remember I was sitting in the playground and I saw this spirit of death coming for me across the playground. It was like this heavy, dark cloud floating across the playground towards me. And when it arrived over my head, it entered through the top of my head and went into my body, down into my stomach. And from that instant that I felt it enter into my body, I was suicidal. I had the thought in that moment, you should kill yourself. And that was the, the first time I'd ever thought that or heard those words. And um, I heard that voice every day from, from, from that day on until Jesus saved me. So by the time I was in my early teens, um, when I was 12, I had my first nervous breakdown and, and I had to be withdrawn from school. And I just, I really was not able to function because I had so many demons. I had a demon that would whisper my name, like I would hear it audibly outside of my head and it was like the most evil voice you can imagine. It, it was, I believe, the voice of the devil or at least um, a, a really horrifying demon that was um, just sent to torment me. The, the, the voice was so frightening in, in its vibration, in its sound that I would just, my whole body would be um, frozen in terror. So, and it used to do that daily. Um, sometimes it would stop for a few weeks and then come back and I was always kind of uh, just so relieved when it would stop thinking that maybe it's gone and then it would come back. I had another demon that would um, scratch me underneath my skin or at least that was the sensation that my whole body just under the surface of my skin there was something scratching me like, like a needle and that would wake me up in the night. I had night terrors, nightmares. I was just being tormented so brutally and looking back I can see that that's because um, the demonic realm, things are visible that we can't see with our eyes. And Satan knows those who are going to choose Jesus eventually. He knows those who are elected to receive salvation, which um, God wants that to be everybody. But he, Satan knows who's going to choose, who's going to say yes. And I believe that he was just trying to destroy me from in the womb until um, the day I was born again. The devil was on my back trying to take me out. So by the time I was in my late teens, I was so um, completely overwhelmed by depression and anxiety. I could not function. Like I said, every day, all I would hear is you should kill yourself. You should kill yourself. And so I started um, using drugs and alcohol to numb the pain. I started partying. Um, I ran away from home when I was 16 and never came, never went back. And um, I just started realizing that I could use narcotics. I could use um, alcohol to numb the pain that I was feeling. I noticed that when I would chain smoke for long enough through the day, my heart would get kind of numb and the space around my heart would feel like um, it had been kind of tranquilized and I, I couldn't feel that agonizing pain that was constantly in my, in my chest, in my heart. So my, um, yeah, my late teens were a blur of partying. I became addicted to alcohol and cocaine and took lots of pills I mean every every drug that was available at the time where I lived I tried um, and when I was 19 I entered into a relationship which was incredibly toxic and um, this would be the first of a chain of very narcissistic relationships where I would choose men who were um, 
either narcissists or had extremely narcissistic traits and I would and I myself was completely broken and completely dysfunctional and so I would have these really toxic relationships and um, at 19 I got pregnant and I had a late term abortion and um, when I it's still hard for me to talk about it even though I know I've been forgiven by Jesus because it's just the biggest regret of my life um, that I murdered my baby I didn't see it as murder at the time because I was told that it's a normal social thing and it's just a cluster of cells and it, and it, it isn't a baby it's not a person it's just it's tissue fine. and everyone yeah. else was doing it you know everyone who like me had had a life and liked to party it was kind of a normal consequence in the culture I grew up in um, but I knew that it was wrong deep down because when I went to the bathroom just before the procedure they give you an opportunity to um, uh, kind of decide are you really going to go through with this um, there's a final medication that you take that once you've taken that there's no returning and so they asked me to be sure that I was sure and I went to the bathroom uh, to take this medication you have to um, take it um, you have to put it inside of yourself and so I went to the bathroom and I'm looking at this tampon that has the medication on it that I need to insert into myself that they've told me will begin the process of killing or aborting my child and um, even though I was told that it doesn't matter, it's just tissue, it's just a cluster of cells, the moment that I was about to insert that medication, I said out loud, goodbye, baby. Oh, and so that just arose great. from within me, you know, on some level I did understand Amen. that life starts at conception and that that was a child that I was um, choosing to end the life of um, by having the abortion. So I went into the procedure and, um, I was given general anesthetic and I died on the operating table. So my heart stopped and I flatlined um, and and I died. So it's really incredible that we, we serve a God who, even if you're living in sin, even as I was on the operating table murdering my own child, he saw fit to bring me back and give me a second chance at life. You know, God would have been completely within his right as a moral, just judge, because love is not just kindness, it's righteousness. He would have been totally within his righteous standing as a morally perfect God to let me perish because I was taking a life and and so he could have taken mine, but it shows the character of God that he's so merciful, so loving, so kind, that even as I was killing my own child, um, God brought me back to life and my heart started beating again after um, the CPR and uh, the resuscitation of the medical staff. After some time, I, I did come back and um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't experience anything. I didn't see anything. It was just blackness. It was just darkness. And I believe that's because it wasn't my time to understand that I was on a fast track to hell. I don't know why uh, it wasn't my time to know that, but it certainly wasn't because I just dived straight back into um, this lifestyle of emotional avoidance and numbing myself with drugs and alcohol. So I continue to have these um, toxic relationships and this really toxic lifestyle all through my 20s. And when I, um, when the relationship I was in eventually ended, um, because that that long term boyfriend um, who, who I'd had the abortion with, he cheated on me and the relationship broke down in such a dramatic way that I had a nervous breakdown. I just couldn't function. I didn't know how to exist outside of this um, toxic dynamic that I had grown so accustomed to. And so this was the first time in my life that I started to turn inward and ask myself, what is wrong with me? And I started to realize that I need healing. I can't go on like this. I can't keep living this way. I will, I will die. I will, I will take my own life. I can't continue in this way. So it was one desperate last attempt to um, seek life before I chose death. I looked around into the world and I asked myself, where do I find healing? Where, where, where is healing in this world? And all I saw in the plethora of things available to me in the culture I grew up in and the occult background I was from was yoga. So I, um, I was very attracted to yoga because yoga promises to give you inner peace. It promises to teach you how to still your mind and all those um, voices of anxiety and depression, all those demonic voices that I was hearing. And, um, I was extremely Jesus attracted to that. I felt peace, that there was something peace. about yoga, something about learning to meditate and sit still that I really needed. So I started practicing yoga. I fell in love with it instantly. I thought this is it. This is my salvation <laughs> because, um, yeah, when I would sit and meditate, the voices would stop 
And it was the only time that I could experience peace and rest from this endless torment in my mind. Manipulating the situation and I learned how to, to stretch and like how to relax my body and how to answer. breathe deeply. Um, because yoga is extremely contingent on breath work and meditation, right? It's not just stretching. You always involve elements of uh, breath work and meditation and vi visualization. So I found it to be um, incredibly helpful temporarily. And I did experience this sense of temporary, what I would now call a kind of bliss that I believe the demons behind yoga allowed me to feel. I thought it was peace, but it's not real peace because real peace only comes from Jesus Christ. And when you've experienced Let's his go. peace, there's nothing. Let's go. No practice, no drug, no spiritual experience outside of Jesus that could ever feel like peace Woo. again once you've experienced the peace that is beyond understanding, beyond. If you guys don't get anything from this, hopefully you get this part right here. Everybody else, yoga, this, that, meditation, they say will give you peace. It's only temporary and it's only a fake peace just so they could suck you into that that uh, community of yoga, witchcraft or whatever. But then at the end, the devil will grab you and destroy you. And she even mentioned there's only one true peace and that is Jesus. Maybe you're finding yourself at a crossroad where those same demons are speaking to you and telling you to kill yourself, murder yourself. You're not worth it. Look at you. You haven't accomplished anything. Look at you. Nobody loves you. Nobody likes you. Look at you. Not even your own family loves you or likes you. You're losing your job. Your wife hates you. Your wife cheated you. Your girlfriend, this, that. There might be tons of things going on in your life. And you hear that voice telling you, just go ahead and end it. If you end it, then you don't have to carry that pain. You don't have to worry about the pain that you feel. It's a lie. This is a lie, and I'm telling you. If this is you and you're feeling that, ask Jesus to take that demonic spirit out. If you're listening to my voice, I rebuke that spirit of suicide. I rebuke that spirit of uh, lust. I rebuke that demon that's speaking to you and lying to you in the name of Jesus. And you yourself... You, if, if you're listening to me and you're going through these, speak it out loud and declare it with all authority in the name of Jesus. Tell that spirit like you would tell a bully to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Or if, if, if somebody was to break into your house, how would you handle that person? You're going to be kumbaya and be all cool and nice and invite them for some tea. No, you're going to probably get something like a bat or a gun and run them off. That's the way you need to combat these demonic voices, these spirits. You just tell it, you know what? I don't want you. I don't need you. I know who you are. Leave. And they have to. They have to leave. In the name of Jesus. Pray to God, get on your knees and ask Jesus to show you, to help you. I'm telling you, there is power in the name of Jesus. And you have to know who you are and have authority. Jesus gave us all authority against these demonic forces. Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. We don't have the fear the spirit of fear. God gave us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You know what sound mind means? Peace. It means we don't have to go to yoga and do all these stupid little stretches. Because it's all demonic. All yoga is is posing yourself to worship these other deities that are demons. We don't need all of that bullcrap in order to have peace. Jesus is peace. 
I'm telling you, you could be going through a storm right now. You could be going through different circumstances. But within that storm, you could keep living. You could keep living in joy and happiness without worry. Trust me. Just because you become a Christian doesn't mean that everything is just all nice and, and, and sweet. You're going to get attacked by the enemy. You're going to get attacked by people that are demonic. That have that spirit, that e evil spirit. They're going to collide with your spirit. Maybe a co-worker, family member, friend. Maybe just a random person at the store. When you have the discernment of spirit, you know what type of spirit that other person has that's trying to come against you. But don't fear and don't fret. When you resist the devil, he has to flee. That's what Jesus said. That's what it says in the Bible. In God's word, and God's word is living and it's truth. It says, resist the devil and he shall flee. It means he has to obey you. Especially when you know you have the authority. Guys, I love y'all. And we're we're there's just so much in in this video to unpack and to listen to. I'm gonna encourage y'all go check out Nayla Rose and give yourself about it about two hours to watch this video, to watch the entire testimony. I know it's gonna bless you, and I know that it's gonna set a lot of you free guys thank you for watching please subscribe please like also have the thanks button if you want to support this channel hit that thanks button and we'll see you on the next video peace